Hello and welcome to episode number 350. This is a premium episode of the Project Management Podcast. You can find us at pm-podcast.com and I'm Cornelius Fichtner. Thank you so much for being a subscriber and supporting the podcast. Shyam Sundar Ramanathan has been a project manager and project leader for well over a decade, and he says that he has enjoyed every minute of it. To him, our work is both art and science. It has specific actions that need to be taken, and the result will be more or less predictable. And in his article, Nine Ways to Become a Great Manager, he also argues the following. There's a lot of hot air around leadership, and I totally agree that leadership is very important. However, management is absolutely imperative to achieve the vision set by the leader. If we have a leader who can manage and a manager who can lead, then we would have an ideal mix of traits to ensure the success of the organization. Sometimes, management is also defined as getting the work done through others. What interested me about his article was to take this a step further and ask, does being a great manager also help me being a great project leader? And what management skills help me? at being a great project leader. In other words, we are going to explore how management skills help us be great project leaders. And again, before we start the interview, Shyam has asked me to specifically mention that the views he expresses in this interview are his own and not those of his employer. And now, here's to the manager within every project leader. Enjoy. Hello, Shyam, and welcome back to the Project Management Podcast. Thank you, Cornelius, for having me on. Our topic today is being a great manager will make you a great project leader. But first off, how do you personally see the difference between management and leadership? Yes, I think this, you know, this discussion has been uh, beaten to death, to be honest. And I think, you know, people like uh, I think Warren Bennis or Peter Drucker have said that uh, leadership is doing the right things and management is doing things right. And I think you know, I have the utmost regard for them, but I think, you know, it's become too simplistic to really separate management and leadership to that extent. But I still think there are differences. So what I would say is management is ensuring that the vision of the leader is executed and managers focus a lot on process. And whereas leaders are looking at the bigger pictures, they look outward, they set the vision, and not all leaders would be interested in managing And, you know, one interesting thing which I read, I think it was Developing the Leader Within You by John Maxwell, where he says, whoever heard of a world manager, but world leader, yes. So what I'm trying to say is most people, (laughs) most people seem to just love being called a leader, whereas manager, management is not considered. But I really think both are important. And I think the separation itself is something which I don't think is needed. I don't think uh, people should say, okay, you're a manager, so you can't be a leader, or you're a leader, so you can't manage. I think there is a lot of commonalities with some differences, but I think, you know, that's my view on management and leadership. <laughs> so I, I think my next question is pretty much redundant then, because I was going to ask you whether you think this interview is more intended for managers or project leaders. So, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> my answer say? is both. <laughs> I think both are needed because the more you learn about something, you know, the better you become. So, if you're a manager, and I think everybody listening is a manager, you know, another interesting thing is this when you have to manage, manage yourself, but with others, lead them. So, I think that's also a, a nice metaphor to have for us. So, when you have to manage, manage yourself, but when you have, when you have to lead, lead others. Just like our last interview that we did together, this interview is based on an article that you wrote. And in that article, you say management is absolutely imperative to achieve the vision set by the leader. Management is absolutely imperative to achieve the vision set by the leader. How exactly do you mean? Yeah, exactly. So management, see again, when we think of a leader, you know, somebody like JFK is obviously a leader, right? Big vision of setting the sending the man on the moon so that's the type of vision that leaders are expected to set but what i'm trying to say is yes you set the vision but after that what happens you need a committed team to achieve that vision if you set an audacious vision the only way it can be achieved is if you have strong management if you have a strong manager who understands the vision 
establishes processes and gets the job done so it really requires someone who has focus who can understand what is required and gets into the nitty gritty details of selecting the team hiring the right people and then setting them tasks and monitoring them and then reporting them on a regular basis so this key thing can be done only by a manager and once again since you say management and leadership shouldn't really be separated in this particular vision that you have the manager and the leader is the same person so i as the leader i set the vision that then i also have to become a manager and manage the implementation of this vision is that right yes that's right but i would like to just give a i'm not saying that every leader can be a manager so i want to be clear there all i'm saying is the separation of completely you know of leadership and management and seeing them as two different people is not really necessary there are a few people who can do both but in a lot of cases you know of course if we are talking really at the top of an organization let's say that you have a number one ceo who sets the vision then you probably have a number two who does the execution now the number two may not have the things to become a number one and the number one may not have the things you need to become a number two but in the case here i would say that uh, if your organization is having the budget it has the finances to have two different people to do this that's great you can have that but i think you know if as a manager you can develop this leadership skill what it does is if it gives like a two in a box right if you are able to give that type of value to your organization when you do both these disciplines in an excellent manner that saves some cost and time for the organization as well let's bring this back to what we are all about here project management and this is going to be a very similar question that i've already asked you what would you say is the job of the manager as compared to the job of the project leader yes so managers would probably be more focused on the people side of the business whereas the project leader would be responsible for making sure that the project is on schedule it is on budget it's making sure the risks are tracked and that is the key distinction and obviously some of the project leaders are expected to manage the team as well but i'm saying the managers would probably be more interested in understanding what each individual is need what in, what each individual needs to make sure the project is successful making sure the needs are met so it's from a more from a people perspective they might also be interested in doing the performance appraisals and other things but as a project leader's primary focus would be on making sure the execution part of the project is taken care so i see that as the difference in your article on which this interview is based you have nine recommendations and these nine recommendations they talk about how being a great manager will help you and i'd like to hear how these will help us make better project leaders so let's go through them here the first one you have in there is set clear goals and objectives and this is something that most project leaders already do right <laughs> they should but you know what <laughs> yeah. is easy is also easy to over step one in a project right <laughs> yeah it's step one but i think the point is you know sometimes we over complicate everything right so people are looking for something dramatic or something use lot of buzzwords and all but i think if you have clear goals and objectives whether it's in your personal life or in the project that helps so i think even though it's a basic point i think it's the first point that's why i put it as the first point because it's absolutely needed and this is the example i want to give here like when vince lombardi took over the green bay packers they asked him why are you going to do this are you going to do that he said no i'm not going to change anything i'm just going to we're just going to become brilliant on the basics so i think irrespective of whether you're leading a project or leading a sports team or anything you have to be brilliant on the basics and i think one of the first basics of uh, project management is or project leader for that matter is to set clear goals and objectives your second recommendation is to put people first how do you put people first in your own projects yeah so what i would do first is understand each person and what their requirements are making sure they understand what is clearly expected of them in that project what their role is what their responsibilities are what is expected by them to be completed and also have a you know one on one session with each of your team members and 
do management by objectives right where you clearly state this is the objective this is what we're trying to do but then give person the autonomy to do it in their own way and you do not have to tell them how to do it you tell them why they have to do it and by when they have to do it but you don't tell them the how if they can if they are capable of figuring it out that's one way of making sure that you know you give them the autonomy to decide so i think these are some of the things you can do to put people first recommendation number 3 from you is give feedback regularly give me a definition here what do you mean by regularly how often is is good is right yeah so i think what's happening is i think the performance appraisal you know which happens once in a year in some organizations which happens twice a year in some organizations it has not had all positive feedback as you know right most of the times performance appraisals are not really given and a lot of now organizations are doing away with a uh, performance appraisals and instead they're moving towards people getting regular feedback so if you complete something today and if i talk about it in the yearly appraisal and say that you didn't do this it does not really add any value so i think what i'm trying to say is give feedback regularly once something is completed give either praise or tell them where things could be done better and that will make sure that there's no surprise at the end of the year when the performance appraisal is done and it also may obviously that's one of the tough jobs of a project leader is to give this type of feedback but i think it's absolutely necessary what type of feedback do you personally give and more importantly how do you give it there are different ways obviously it depends on the location of the person if they are in person i think having an in person meeting always works and having a uh, giving feedback in private is always good if it's a a real good recognition from the client or you want to praise that can be done publicly emailing them and copying the team and so that everybody knows what type of uh, what type of work is appreciated but if you want to give any constructive feedback that they need to improve on i think that should be done in private and that's how i would prefer to be to be done now this is the tough part you know when someone something has to change or when you feel someone has to change some things they're doing then that's the tough part but that's the main job of a project leader next you recommend that we have to take responsibility do you agree that the project leader is responsible for both the project successes and failures of the project team absolutely i think that that is the reason why you're called a project leader so i think you can wear it as a badge of honor and say that yes hey i am the project leader don't worry i'm going to do everything it takes and uh, you know i'm going to make sure that you guys succeed because that's how i will succeed so i think that's the project manager so one of the metaphors i like is the window and mirror principle basically when the team succeeds look at the window and you know praise them and when it fails look in the mirror and you know you take responsibility so i think that's a great metaphor because that's the responsibility of project leader and if you do that actually it it makes sure that the team also delivers and makes sure that the project does not fail because they do not want to see you as a failure so that uh, actually helps overall uh, in improving the success as well so right now you tell us to take responsibility when i take look down the list here i see that delegation is coming up as as one of the the upcoming recommendations you have so how do i balance between delegation we'll talk about that in a little while and right now here between taking responsibility so yeah that's a good point the the whole point is this you cannot do everything right so that's the whole point whether it's uh, management is sometimes uh, defined as getting the work done through others so the way you get done uh, work done through others is delegation so in terms of responsibility once you delegate there are different types of delegation as you said we'll come to it but you know one of the keys is you make sure that you assign the task to the right person with the right skills and but ultimately if that that doesn't work out remember that you are the one who assigned the task to that person so that's where the responsibility comes it's still your responsibility if it doesn't work your next recommendation is four words long and i think it's extremely difficult to to actually implement become a great leader what are some of the ways in which you have done this personally how have you made this a reality for yourself yeah i think so becoming a great leader is not a destination it's a journey so i think the thing which i can say for sure is i've been on the path of continuous learning throughout my career 
so i have taken certifications i've got about i think eight or nine certifications so of course project management uh, six sigma green belt insurance certifications i've made sure that i've been continuously learning so when you have more information more knowledge it become you know you obviously develop leadership skills the next thing i've done is i've made sure i'm on a path of continuous learning so i make sure that i i read every day i read on leadership management i listen to the you know obviously your podcast i listen to a lot of other podcasts as well on thank you uh, yeah thank a lot i do listen to a lot of other podcasts and i listen to audio books as well so i think these are some of the ways i've become a great leader and of course the other point is it's not only about learning it's about implementing so i think you have to implement what you learn and once you implement it and you know becoming great leader means you have to become a mentor to a lot of people so if you have learned something i think it's it does a disservice if you do not share it with others so i think i have shared it through my blogs whatever i've learned is out there so those are some of the ways i've tried to you know keep improving myself i mentioned that you one of your recommendations is delegation and we've reached that point here uh, recommendation number 6 is delegate effectively what is your personal approach to delegation so i think you know a team is a diverse group of people and if as a manager or as a project leader you need to understand what each first you need to understand your strengths because if 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 there's a strength that you're really good at then you take that task and the other thing you need to understand is what each other person's strengths are so once you form the team ideally you would want to form a team knowing what the project requires and then you would want to make sure that the correct people are assigned to the right tasks and then you ha- you tell them that hey this is the objective of this task can you do it first get agreement that they are comfortable with doing it once they're comfortable tell them the deadline and they do it and to be fair nowadays a lot of team members are very autonomous they are self driven they know how to get it done and also uh, have an open door policy where you allow them to come back whenever they have issues so that you can help them so you have to have that so you know it's also called sometimes like management by exception where you completely tell them what is required to be done and once you know the person can do it effectively only if it's an exception they need to come to you so i think that's a good approach when you have a mature team and when you have people who can lead themselves that's a good approach to have when you when you know that the day they can do the job and delegation means you give a sense of ownership to the other person as well and they feel important that they are not being micromanaged which is a word a lot of people don't like right <laughs> Yes, it is not. <laughs> Become a master communicator is your next recommendation. What are some of the ways in which we can learn to become a master communicator? So the things that uh, can enable you right now we have so many tools available right to improve yourself. So I think the first thing is you have to get into the habit of uh, reading a lot because once you uh, read a lot whether it's blogs part or listening to podcasts what it does is it helps you amass a lot of information and once you have a lot of information you automatically improve your vocabulary and you're a better communicator and become highly competent in your area of expertise because when you're confident about what you're going to talk about then you actually become a better communicator and some of the other steps in improving your communication is taking some courses if you know a lot of people say that you know you should take a toast masters or something like that if you have problem with public speaking public speaking but i think becoming a master communicator is again something that you keep on doing and writing is one of the things that has helped me become better at communication because when you start writing you you know you organize your thoughts and once you organize your thoughts you start improving your communication skills and then final thing in communication is being prepared for anything you know for a meeting for even being prepared for the day actually helps you become a better communicator because you know what's going to happen you also recommend that we enhance employee engagement what engagement do you mean yeah so i think according to gallup nearly i think 33% of the uh, workforce overall are not engaged in their work meaning that they really don't like their work so i think this is a great opportunity for managers to really understand people are not engaged in their work what is missing now i think before we go there first as a manager you need to be engaged right so you need to be engaged before you can even think about engaging others and 
engagement here means i want people bringing their best to work you know they have to bring their best to work so one of the things that we need to make sure they can do one of the ways you can enhance employee engagement is to link the meaning of the work to the people or people understand why they're doing what they're doing give them ownership give them autonomy and praise regularly i think i keep repeating this point but i think it's very important that you keep praising even for small things if there's really something that someone has done pretty well then you need to praise or if it's a regular monotonous task actually even that deserves praise because some people don't like doing it so you really need to praise uh, regularly and then you have to give constant feedback so i think these are some of the ways you can also enhance employee engagement it may be obvious but let me still ask this how will enhancing employee engagement help us on our projects how will it help us to be a better project leader yeah so if people are engaged you do not need to really worry about whether the timelines will be met because if they are engaged they'll make sure that there's no stone un- stone unturned and they will make sure the timelines get met so the advantage for you as a project leader is it would require less of your effort in you know trying to motivate the team or trying to make sure they get the job done or trying to make them even excited about their work once they're engaged they will automatically be self driven so it removes a lot of the other uh, bureaucratic things that a project leader might have to do so i think that's where it helps and it gives an incentive for the project leader to focus on just what he needs to or he or she needs to do to get the job done Your final recommendation is to create a compelling scorecard. Can you give us an example of a scorecard that you have used yourself? So yeah, in a lot of the projects which I have done, what we have done is we have uh, as teams we have created like a dashboard where we we where we track what our goal for that week is. For example, I have to execute 100 test cases. I then analyze how many have passed how many have failed how many defects are open what is the severity of those defects when will it be fixed and what are the risks what are the issues so these are the types of scorecards now a scorecard to be effective has to be simple what it needs is this what is your current level where are you currently for example a revenue case it could be 100 million what is your expected result basically maybe 150 million what is the due date or deadline for that and who is accountable that's all the basically it's a very simple formula but if you follow that it works okay let me recap your recommendations are set clear goals and objectives put people first give feedback regularly take responsibility become a great leader delegate effectively become a master communicator enhance employee engagement and create a compelling scorecard these steps they seem rather simple do they really work <laughs> yes if it's implemented it works and i think yes it's really simple that's what i said if we think that you know we want to complicate stuff and uh, you know make it uh, sound you know a lot of passwords and all that i think but bottom line if you think about it this is what management is if you have people who are in, if you have employees who are engaged if you are able to delegate effectively if you are a master communicator if you become a great leader if you take responsibility and you give feedback regularly it's going to your team is going to succeed i don't think this if you follow these steps that you can't succeed so i think these do work the only question is how often do we implement it and do we overlook this because it's simple i think that's where a lot of things we trip over because it seems simple we think oh yeah we are already doing it right but it doesn't always happen Are any of these nine steps more important than others or or in another way if you had to choose and you were only allowed to do one of these which one would you definitely do as a project leader i think i would say two rather than one because i think setting clear goals and objectives and then becoming a master communicator because that's really important as a project leader or manager so i think these two are stand out and which one of these nine steps do you personally feel is the most difficult for you to follow giving feedback regularly is not easy to be fair and, and why I, not yeah and i think giving praise is easier for me but if i have to give uh, you know areas of improvement it it requires a little bit of a stretch for my comfort zone because obviously i you know i have good relationships with everyone but uh, 
sometimes you do have to give the hard feedback and that's where i sometimes struggle but i still do it but it is a little bit of a struggle for me compared to other other the other items and of course i also have to ask you the other side which one of these do you find very simple and easy to follow and why for me it's communication so i think uh, I, i've always been i think that's one of my strength areas so i really like i like to communicate with people i like to speak i like to write so those are my strength areas so it, it just comes much more easily compared to any of the other things and it's also something which i really like so if you like it i think it helps so these nine recommendations that we have looked at and that you gave us they're really more on the managerial side of business but again <laughs> we're the project management podcast so our listeners they're mostly focused on leading projects and they're less focused on managing day-to-day -day operations where employee engagement and scorecards may be you know used on a daily basis and important is this something where we may need to work more closely together with the line managers or or how do you see us do this yes i agree with you yes you need to work closely with uh, the line managers as well but i think focus uh, you know as a project leader you should focus on the deliverables communicate the risks on a daily basis make sure there's a risk register and then if you have a larger vision which we just talked about you know if you look at you may not have to do your you may not have to create the company score card or you may not directly improve employee engagement but one thing you can do is you have responsibility for your team you can make sure that the members on your team are bringing their best to work and i think that is to a certain degree on your control of course there are certain things like compensation so many other things rewards which may not be directly in your control but still a large part i would say at least 60 to 70% of a person's engagement with the project is dependent on the project leader so these areas you can still contribute and just think of your small team as you know you're running a an organization and basically make sure you do these things for that team and once you do that you know it could even be contagious and it could pick on with other teams as well you yourself told me that you are a long time listener of the project management podcast and here is my final question for you so you know exactly what's coming because in my final question i i always like to hear you my guests give us recommendations how we project managers how we project leaders can apply your recommendations in our daily lives so can you give us shyam your two to three recommendations how do we start applying your findings on our projects how do we do this as project leaders yes i think the first thing is as i said you need to be engaged first or i would also put it in a different way and uh, be inspired first so because if you are engaged totally in your project you're so committed to it and you show up every day at your best to do the work then that changes the whole game and it makes sure the team also follows suit so as a that's what leadership is and i think uh, you know my definition of leadership is very simple it's to be in action and inspire these are the two things you know if you do that then you are a good leader then the other thing is to make sure that you are on top of your projects in terms of uh, you know you can say it's keep your eye on the ball so in the sense whatever is going on in your project you are aware of it both people issues and project issues uh, scope constraints scope creep everything so basically you have to think from the overall project point of view and make sure you are always communicating every day or every week on where the uh, problems are where the gaps are and then address those and finally i think uh, one of the things that project leaders have to do which will be applicable to their life as well is continuous learning so never stop learning every single day uh, learn something new about project management uh, learn something new about leadership listen to the podcast and read the books and just keep on getting uh, you know any industry wide certifications as well you know I don't think having extra knowledge hurts at any time so I think uh, those are some of my recommendations. And since you mentioned that people should be reading blogs uh, I also have to mention that you have a blog and everyone can find this at maximizepotential.blogspot.com and uh, again you heard me say this in the previous interview as well maximize is spelled in the British English spelling so it uses an s 
and not A, Z or Z. What do you write about in your blog, Jim? So I, I write about a lot of things. So a lot of it might be also related to personal development, Cornelius. So I write a lot mm-hmm. about, uh, uh, you know, how to manage your time better, how you can become an effective leader, how you can engage employees. I wrote one which I really like personally is a couple of things. One is what to learn from Steve Jobs and seven inspiring lessons from Elon Musk. And I write a lot of book reviews as well. So it's a it's like it's like combination of everything. Everything a leader needs, right? <laughs> leader or even a person, I think it can be just put as an individual. I think you know if you want to get inspired, I think that's what my aim is. More and also you get more knowledge. So it's a combination of both. Excellent. Shyam, thank you so much again for stopping by at the Project Management Podcast here with us today to talk about how being a great manager will make you a great project leader. Oh, thanks a lot, Cornelius. And uh, I want to wish the listeners a great new year and a great 2016. Thank you. And that was our leadership interview with Shyam Sundar Ramanathan. That's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. If you are a project manager who wants to become PMP or PMM ACP certified, then the easiest way to do so is with our sister podcasts, the PM Prepcast and the Agile Prepcast, and study for the exam by watching the in-depth exam prep video training from pmprepcast.com. As always, you can find us on the web at pm-podcast.com. Please send your emails to info at pm-podcast.com and when you write, yeah, you know, please do tell me where in the world you are writing from. And finally, we have this. It is a terrible thing to look over your shoulder when you are trying to lead and find no one there. Until next time. <laughs>